Hey gang, and welcome back for another video here on Joe Chem. Okay gang, this video is gonna be short, and yeah, I know we're talking about carbohydrates, so it was already gonna be sweet, but all we're gonna talk about in this video is ether and ester formation, talking about doing it with monosaccharides in their cyclic form. So here we have just uh, beta d um, and really this type of concept I've only ever seen it pop up on complete the reaction sections. And by no means am I saying I'm the authority on all things organic chemistry problems, but I feel like that's where you might only see it too. So it's some nice way to pick up points if you see this coming your way. So, right, if we take a look here, you know, beta D glucopyranos, something, you know, before we even get started on this, one thing I kind of want to point out is, you know, this would be a beta, you know, anomer. Because if you look at this CH2OH, this is up equatorial. And if you look at the anomeric position, which is next door to the oxygen embedded in the ring, we see it's up equatorial. So really what we see is up and up. So it's beta and obviously same thing down here because this is just the same structure repeated twice. And, you know, you might be wondering why I know this is glucose and glucose is kind of, you know, termed the all equatorial sugar obviously excluding the, uh, the anomeric position because we know that can change. But if you have all equatorial OHs and, you know, D-glucose, I'm sorry, is the all equatorial sugar because being this being equatorial, 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 this can change as we know. That's how you know you have D-glucose. It's the all equatorial sugar. That's kind of the only chair form that I really remember in terms of, you know, ha having had memorized the stuff in the past. Anyways, so... Two different things going on here. So when you see this uh, ACO2, what I really want you to think, remember AC just kind of equals, this, this being a CH3 right here, you just have two carbons, a carbonyl, and then whatever it's attached to. So, and I have this in the wrong place, I'm so sorry, it's this. So what this is, you know, the AC2O, is really just an acid anhydride, it looks like this you have two of these and just the oxygen that connects them okay so we basically all we have going on here is nucleophilic attack happening in different ways so what's going to happen here is an addition elimination mechanism where all of these oxygens right all of them right because you see we have excess of this they're just going to attack you know the carbonyl carbon in the acid anhydride or you can do this with an acid chloride. So whether you have this or whether you have something like this, I, I, I'm choosing this acid chloride because it would match what we're working with in terms of the acid anhydride. All of these things are going to, and let me actually redraw the, now that we know what we're doing, let me just redraw this up here. Every one of these oxygens will do this, except for the one embedded in the ring. We will attack the carbonyl carbon, electrons kick up, electrons kick down. We boot off this thing, which is our good leaving group. It's just the addition elimination mechanism we learned when we did carboxylic acid derivatives. The pyridine here is to deprotonate this oxygen at the end. The pyridine is just for you know a little base cleanup. What you get at the end is you make esters at all your positions. So here, that means you will end up with an AC, if you will, on all of your oxygens. And again, that's possible because we have excess. No one would ever give you like two or three equivalents and ask you to pitch, you know, pick one or the other. You know, you'd actually have to run the experiment in real life. But if you have excess, you can bet that all of these oxygens will, you know, go through the addition elimination mechanism and you'll have an ester product, right? We have many esters in there. Okay, now down here, what's going on with this? So what we kind of have down here is a Williamson ether synthesis vibe. We are going to essentially use the silver one oxide, the Ag2O, and that's going to sneakily deprotonate all of these oxygens that it can. It deprotonates them so that these things can do SN2 on whatever, you know, substrate that has a good leaving group. So you can essentially assume that this will deprotonate, you know, this, for example, making the O minus. This is a mild base, 
I'm gonna mention at the end of the video because it will push us into the next video. We just attack right here, uh, you know, attack the substrate, boot the good leaving group, you know, we have excess substrate, so you can again assume you will end up with an ether at, you know, on every single oxygen in your sugar. Okay, so again, like I, like I said, this is a great complete the reaction question, or maybe you get the product and you have to provide the reactant, or maybe you get the beginning and the end and you fill in the reagents in the middle. Now, like I said, uh, you need a base to kind of facilitate the deprotonating of these OHs when you're doing the ether, you know, the etherization of your, your sugar. And again, I said that this was a mild base, so it's, it's definitely going to deprotonate and give you a more nucleophilic oxygen, but the strength of the base is very intentional here. If you threw in a much stronger base, you're actually going to see something else happen that you don't want to happen, and it's called epimerization, and it would kind of screw some things up with what you're trying to do right here. So now that we're done with this, we will tackle what is, you know, what, first of all, what's an epimer? And second of all, what is epimerization? But we'll do that in the next video. But before we go, I just want to say, if you're watching me from YouTube, thank you for being a Joe Chemist. You rock. Make sure to check out these videos on my actual website, joechem.io. There are attached worksheets with solutions for every video. They're hundred percent free. And if you're rocking with me from joechem.io directly, thank you so much. That's it for this. So thanks for watching. And I hope to see you all in the next video.